Hello and welcome to Money Tips, this is Charles Kelly. Well, today I was going to talk about the, the energy crisis and the new measures been announced by the government. I will still do that, but the events have been rather overshadowed by the news that the Queen of England's health is uh, failing and uh, th this could be the end of a, a, a very long era. So we, we do wish the Queen very well. You can, you can check out that news yourself, perhaps by the time uh, you, you you hear this things things may have changed but in the morning uh, you know we have the other news of course that this this week that we have a new prime minister uh, Liz Truss that I, I've actually met her my, myself uh, many years ago she was a very engaging person not quite I I think on, on camera she comes across as quite cold and businesslike but actually uh, she, she's known to be a uh, friendly and, and, and fun loving social person very much a family person but I, I do wish her well and one of the first things she had to tackle was the the energy crisis and this this cost of living and energy crisis that is hitting the country a few weeks ago I announced that the the energy cap could pr put up bills again that, that have already gone up by, by 80% in October and I think the government had to step in and do something and I, I think it was because Boris had already been uh, sort of voted out, if you like, by his own MPs, and he was no longer going to be Prime Minister, that was kind of put on hold until the new PM came in. And Liz Truss uh, beat off her rival, Rishi Sunak, largely on the basis that she was going to do something uh, to, to boost things, maybe even if it meant boost spending, but do something now to, to help people and get the economy moving again. And that, that's why I liked what she said. A lot of critics, of course, have said that all these spending plans have to be paid for and it's going to be added to the amount that we have to pay back uh, in the future and that will be paid back by our children and grandchildren. But we've already got that debt. We've already got a true trilli two tri a two trillion debt from the, 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 the events of the last couple of years. And you know, the government spent uh, something like 300 billion on measures such as the uh, uh, the furlough scheme paying people to stay at home and a lot of people are still staying at home especially civil servants and bounce back loans and, and that sort of thing so so Liz Truss is, is going to and the first thing she had to, to do is deal with this energy crisis because this this new energy cap lifting which means that the the, the, the regulator will lift a, the cap on what uh, energy companies can charge there was a cap there and they lifted it and they're going to lift it again in October because of wholesale prices because the energy companies could no longer afford to uh, supply it at that level they were going to lift that cap possibly by 80 percent and that would have sent bills like literally through the roof soaring now other countries have taken step Germany and France have spent like 50 60 billion euros and the government now looks to be spending possibly up to 150 billion pounds on a package to cap bills to 2,500 pounds um, this is I've, I've never heard of this it's unprecedented in my time you know, I've never heard of such a package this is getting uh, on, on the level of the support that was offered during you know the, the last few years uh, so she's announced this plan in Parliament and uh, it said that they will basically they're freezing the cap on bills for the next two years and for businesses for the next six months that um, we don't quite know all the details yet and quite how it's going to be paid for but it's in consultation with the energy companies some sort of levy will be added to our bills over the, over the future so it, it's a bit like a loan really it's it's a bit like um, topping up your mortgage with another loan uh, because uh, this is all going to be paid for somehow right uh, the government hasn't got any money the government just collects money from taxpayers and businesses they borrow a certain amount of money or well, a lot of money actually in, in the last few years and then they distribute it they spend it on various programs most of it of course goes back to the public in some way or another through education health is a huge cost one of the biggest cost social security uh, state pensions uh, it, it goes back in some way education of course and and defense is, is a smaller proportion but police all these things uh, and then it gets filtered down to local authorities who, sp who spend on uh, keeping up the roads the parks the libraries collecting your bins your rubbish um, de dealing with that sort of thing and of course there's tens of yeah, I mean half the country is employed in one way or another by the government more than 50% of the workforce so it kind of gets churned and spent again and a lot of people are critical of the amount of money that's spent by government but you know when you say the government are stealing money from us yeah they're taking money from us 
and, and they're paying it out again in, in some form. Obviously, they look after themselves. All governments, all leaders live in palatial mansions. All leaders don't get the bus anymore. Well, maybe some countries, maybe some Scandinavian country, some guys can say, well, I get the train to work. But let's face it, most leaders around the world get chauffeur driven everywhere they go. They, they live in a grace and favor home. Uh, of course, they work hard and, and Liz Truss will be working hard as she moves into number 10 uh, and appoints her, her team with her. But, you know, they, they do look after themselves. Incidentally, another important point to remember is that the top team that Liz is appointed because when a new prime minister comes in, they tend to get rid of the, the other cabinet members, the other close government members and bring in their own people. And some of them jumped before they were pushed, like Priti Patel, the Home Secretary. Uh, she's been replaced by a, a woman of, of, well, her family are of Indian descent, so she's a woman of colour. The Chancellor of the Exchequer, Kwati Kwarteng, is a, is a person who comes from a, an immigrant family. Um, and uh, so, so we, we have now a woman Prime Minister and the people in the top team, including the Foreign Secretary, James Cleverly, all people of colour or women. So it's the first time that uh, the, the top positions of state, the great officers of state, which is the prime ministers, the foreign office, the chancellor, the treasury, the chancellor of the exchequer and the home office looking after our security and all that. Uh, 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 all those positions are now headed by non-white uh, non men, if you like. Uh, so it's the first time and, and it shows that there is a lot of diversity in, in the UK. Uh, so anyway, getting back to, to what I was saying, this, this measure of support will possibly cost 150 billion. We don't know the total cost yet because it depends on how gas prices go over the next few years. Of course, we've seen a surge in gas prices since the Russian invasion. If things get sorted out there, gas prices might come down, but she's also announced measures so that uh, to, to, to ensure that the country is not in this position ever again. And that could include uh, bringing back fracking, which has lifted the the, the ban on fracking, which is a way of getting shale gas out of out of the ground. Boris, in his sort of green uh, plan, uh, shelved that plan, even though we'd, we'd already drilled and found places where we could get uh, shale gas through fracking. But uh, she's bringing this back, and that means certain places around the country, we could see disruption, we could see demonstrations. But if we can get that uh, shale gas out of the ground, uh, one MP said today there was 150 years worth of gas in the ground. There's also North Sea oil and gas, which they've kind of not uh, been continuing with, with exploration and, and digging out that oil, drilling for that oil. So we could see that coming back. Um, so we've got to be, and, and nuclear, of course, where she's announced massive plans for uh, nuclear spending, including uh, a place in, in Sussex, uh, the Sizewell nuclear plant, they're going to spend billions there immediately getting that up to scratch. So we, we could see, and, and this, this spending does have a trickle down effect because it creates jobs in those areas uh, and, and it, it just creates more activity, more business activity. There's spin-offs from those jobs. There's spin-offs to the local, local community, which all employ people as well. So I think we're going to see good things under Liz Trust. Let's keep fingers crossed. We want her to succeed. We want the country to, to get out of what we seem to be going into, which is a recession. The Bank of England said we're, in, in, we're going into recession. We've got, you know, almost record for the, in our time, record interest rates, inflation uh, you know, over 10 percent now. So we, something's got to be done. And I, I would like to say other good news is that she's suspended these green levies, which we all pay for these green projects, these wind farms that we all pay for on our bills. That adds 150 pounds on average to every bill every year. So bills are going to be capped at two and a half thousand pounds on average for families. That means a roughly 200 a month. Um, so some are going to benefit a lot. Some won't benefit. Obviously, if you are uh, you know, a wealthy person earning, you know, in the top levels of incomes, like if you're earning a quarter of a million a year, then, you know, another couple of hundred or another three, four hundred on your bill is not going to make a big dent in your in your overall budget. But if you are earning, say, 20,000 a year, you know, a five thousand pound a year um, energy bill is, is, is a quarter of your income. It's like you would the sort of amount you'd pay on rent or a mortgage. So something, you know, I'm glad that they're really doing something and taking positive action. So people have still seen their bills double, by the way. So it's not all, uh, you know, r roses in the garden. It, people have still seen their bills double already, but it won't double again. And, and that's that's the good news. So why is it then 
that people always seem to need government aid in times of crisis. We saw this uh, during the you know the last couple of years when we had had the furlough scheme, we saw companies laying people off, and people said that you know I've been working here 20 years, they've just laid me off now, I can't survive more than a month. You know I'll be able to pay my mortgage this month, but after that I can't do it. You now why is it that? After working all those years, people are in that position. Are you in that position? Can you afford to pay your bills? Would you have been able to afford to heat your home this winter uh, had this package not been announced? Would you be able to pay your bills this winter with the package? You know, your bills have already doubled. Can you afford to heat and eat? Can you afford to live comfortably? Or are you gonna be sitting in your home freezing cold with two or three jumpers like one XMP suggested and you know wearing all these clothes and sitting and watching TV with a hot water bottle around your, your belly. So are you in that position? Because I, I do wonder why people are, I mean, I'm not, you know, criticizing anyone, I'm not judging anybody, but it does seem strange that we live in, you know, one of the top 10 nations in, in wealth in, in the world. I, I, I think we were fifth or sixth and we've been pushed back by India, apparently. India has overtaken us in the, in the wealth state, in the world stage of wealth. Uh, but we're still one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Um, you know, why is it that we're in that in that position? Well, the answer is um, people. You know, the vast majority of people have little or no savings. They they don't manage their money properly. They live month to month throughout their working lives, and often into their retirement, they're still living. You know, month to month, paycheck to paycheck, as they say. Um, and if anything goes wrong, they're in a disaster period or they have to borrow money to get out of it. They have to take short term loans to pay bills or to buy food. Sometimes they're buying food on their credit cards and they kind of they're on that never they're like a rat on that, that wheel that, that just never seems to stop. They just can't get off the, the wheel and like, you know, the hamster wheel that runs around and they just keep running and running. So th that's the position that a lot of people are in because they cannot manage their finances. Now people say, well, no, it's all right for you if you earn a lot of money and that sort of thing. Uh, but it, it's not the case. I've seen people manage their money that are on modest incomes, just working in sort of catering jobs uh, on low incomes, you know, even down to minimum wage, but they do extra work. They, they do, they make a bit of extra money on the side and, and they, then they buy a property, then they buy another property. I, I know a couple like that, that have bought several properties and, and you know they've done very well and they just work in ordinary jobs and yet i know people have earned a fortune in their lifetime and they've blown it all and, and end up with almost nothing so it's not about how much you earn it's about how much you can keep right so as i said most people have no savings most people uh, in my uh, experience as a financial advisor are, are making woefully inadequate retirement provisions you know we're not we're talking about living at the moment but also coming up to retirement you know the baby boomer age and that's when millions of people will be retiring um this is you know and this is why millions of pensioners will actually be still dependent on the state even though they're in retirement now i know that the pensions industry is not what it was and you know companies don't give the pensions that they used to give and that's another reason why you know you've got to row your own boat because the government's not going to give you an outboard mo motor outboard motor and unlimited petrol you've got to start rowing your own boat because they're not going to look after you um just give you some figures here um uh, according to the department of work and pensions report in 2019 20 million people were claiming department of work and pensions benefits some sort of benefits 20 million people you know that's almost uh, i think that's about two-thirds of the working population if, I, if i'm if i'm right um now two-thirds of those benefit claimers or 13 million people were of state pension age so they've worked all their life they've worked 40 years they're claiming a state pension but they still need benefits to top up those those state pensions and the number of people receiving state pension has fallen to to 12 million and this is partly because they pushed back the retirement age for women that used to be 60 now it's 65 but some are getting it later 66 67 when it will it be 70 in the next few years you know if you're a millennial what what then will you be pushing uh pension age at, at 70 75 even you know will you be working till you drop literally um so th this is this is 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 a serious problem you know we've also got a situation where the pound is falling against the dollar and most currencies are, but that's making it expensive for our imports. So we're not out of trouble yet. Just because Liz Trust has got up and said we're going to help the economy, we're not out of trouble yet. Things are still going to be tough this year. 
the pound falling means that we're, we are paying more for our imports and, and interest rates will rise again. I, I'm sure that interest rates will rise before they eventually fall and inflation falls. But I think you know we're in for a rough ride in the next couple of years. So you've got to really get your finances together, not just to uh, survive this, this coming downturn, but to, to thrive in it and, and build yourself a future so you can build up your finances and become financially free. I'm not saying I can help you to be a billionaire or a multimillionaire, but I can certainly help you to become financially free, whatever that means for you. That, that, that for some people, financially free means living in a massive house with a Bentley and that's what, for others, it just means having enough money to come in, coming in to be comfortable or to have enough money coming in without working, to, to be living off your, your uh, savings, to be living off passive income. So whatever that means for you, I can help you transform your, your, your finances to that way. And I'm offering some free training. I'll put a link up on, on this. And I'm also offering, I've opened up some slots again. Uh, I was fully booked for the last couple of months, but I've opened up some slots for my free Wealth Accelerator Discovery Call, where I take you through a 30 minute uh, free consultation to see what we can do, if, if we can do something, if we can work with you to help you get your finances in order and build uh, wealth for yourself for the future. It's not a, a get rich quick scheme, by the way. Uh, this is a, a way of managing your money so that you can properly build wealth for the future. And, and, and that's, that's what I, I, I hope I want you to, to be able to do. Just tell you a final little story. Um, you know, I've often said that, you know, migrant people, people who come here uh, from other countries and work uh, like, like my parents did, uh, and like a lot of British people do in other countries, they tend to sort of just work and get their heads down. They're not interested in the news. And Brian Tracy famously said that most immigrants do work because they don't watch the news for about five years. A lot of them can't speak even proper English. So they're not even watching the news. And, and, and that's very true. They're just, they're just beavering away working. And I was speaking to someone today actually whose mother runs a business. They're, they're originally uh, from, from the Philippines and her mother runs a, a business. And she said to her mum, did you know there was a new prime minister? Uh, this week and the mother said no who is it I, I didn't know so all this week of all these weeks of uh, the, the Prime Minister battle and Boris getting uh, pushed out and then this this contest going on between Liz Truss and and uh, Rishi Sunak and then the eventual winner being announced uh, earlier this week it's just gone completely over the head they're, they've got their head down they're just working away and, and they're not watching the news they don't care who the Prime Minister is and and in a way that's true you shouldn't really bother about that you can watch the news occasionally you can put it on look at it on your phone but if you're too wrapped up in the news you're probably not doing anything for yourself to push yourself forward um, because in the end whatever whatever government's in you've just got to get on with it as I said row your own boat because the government's not going to give you an outboard motor and unlimited free petrol so look at that that link for the, the free wealth discovery call and my free training, which you can look at absolutely free. Click on the link and, and just you know put your name in and you can watch that right now. Thanks very much for listening. And I'll speak to you again for my UK property talk this weekend. Thanks a lot. Bye for now. This is Charles Kelly bringing you money tips to help you save, earn, invest and accumulate more money. Thank you.